Hi guys, this is Kaiwan here, the R&D and formulation side of Big Flex and today probably we are going to have a little chat with my very good friend Dr. Cyrus Mehta over here Hi. who is probably the finest in, of ophthalmologist in India. So what we probably, uh, it's a very casual talk and I want people to know that even doctors at this uh, uh, at this capacity, this level, uh, so interested in training, so interested. Very unusual, to be honest, for a doctor of his caliber to actually uh, spend at least a, an hour, hour or two sometimes. It probably even goes for a, a cycle uh, uh, event to uh, Lonavla on Sundays. So... This is something that even I have not done. So him being a doctor and it's it's a complete transformation. So in the last one year, the transformation that this gentleman has done, I don't think I've ever seen, forget a doctor, I've not even seen someone within my clientele who's done so good. So let's hear a little about his transformation right now. So Kaiwan, you know, it's a very interesting story. When I was in the 8th standard, I bought a book called The Education of a Bodybuilder by Anil Schwarzenegger. So it was a small paperback book about this big. So I read that whole book in one day and I figured out that uh, I wanted to look like that and I wanted to be Anil Schwarzenegger. So the next day I went opposite Metro Cinema to one of those sports stores. I bought a bench, some dumbbells and a squat rack. The third day I started training after reading the book. So there was no real concept of training in those days. In 1985 or 1984 in India, we didn't have like professional trainers and professional gyms. Basically had talwarkars, you went there, the coach told you something, done better tomorrow. And then it kind of progressed from there. So I thought that Arnold's way of training was very systematic. I started benching, squatting and doing whatever I could at home. So within a year or two, I had changed quite a bit. Then... Medical school came along and all the training went downhill because there was just no time. There was no proper uh, time to eat your food. There was, there was only going to the library. There was only studying and there was only working. And when I got back to Bombay from uh, America in uh, 2001, 2002, I started training again, but I had got rather heavy, uh, fat, sluggish. I didn't really feel very good. And I would do a little bit of running, a little bit of training. I would join the gym. I would hang out with Kaiwan and Rizwan. And, you know, I would always say, okay, one day when I have the time, I'm going to do this. So finally, last year when the pandemic hit, I realized that there's not going to be any real work for three, four months. So I said, well, why not utilize this time and make a difference to our own health, our own immunity and, uh, uh, try to lose some fat and become healthy. So I started training. I devised a training program. I have a whole uh, gym set up at home, which is just like a commercial gym. It has everything, uh, including cardio equipment and everything. So I started training three, four hours a day uh, because I uh, I used to watch Rich Piana's videos where he said there's nothing like overtraining. There's only uh, underfeeding and under recovery and, and under nutrition. So I started training three and four hours a day and sure enough, within three, four months with really good inputs from Kaiwan who guided me uh, and gave me really good tips. Rizwan gave me good tips. I have great friends in the bodybuilding fraternity for the last 20 years. I asked all of them because uh, uh, there is no limit to good advice. And uh, so then I slowly started to change. Body fat decreased. I felt much better. And even though the pandemic kind of tapered off in three or four months, I kept going. I took up a endurance activity, which is cycling, because I realized that when you're 50 years old, which I am now, you can't be running every day. Eventually, your knees will pack up. So I wanted to have an endurance activity, which I could add to the bodybuilding and the weightlifting uh, so that your uh, cardiovascular system stays strong. Because remember, we are alive because our hearts are pumping, not because our biceps are large. So you have to keep your heart in good condition. And uh, there is some evidence to show that over the years, if you only do 
very heavy resistance training, maybe your left ventricle will hypertrophy, your cardiac output will decrease and the only way to counter this is to keep all your blood lipids good is to take the correct supplements and to do a lot of cardiovascular activity which is why I did cycling and uh, I trained with a group of really great guys and we went so much so as we could do from Kolaba to Khandala in 5 hours which is not bad considering that we are not professional athletes, we are more like weekend warriors. So that's what I've been basically doing in the last one year. And once you have a structured program and you have uh, good friends like Kaiwan who are really knowledgeable and Rizwan to help with the supplements, I don't think that it's really difficult and anyone can do it. Fair enough. Now, let's, uh, when you talk about supplements, what is the uh, bare necessity that you think uh, supplement someone should take? So, I'm not really a fitness professional or a, a, a MD medicine. I'm an ophthalmologist. But from what little bit I know, I would say that you have to start with vitamin C. Because vitamin C will uh, help you. It will make you make your immune system stronger. It will make your collagen better. Your skin will be better. Uh, it's also an antioxidant. And remember, the guy who discovered the power of vitamin C, Linus Pauling won the Nobel Prize for this. But we don't really know how really good it is. And what we do is that we really underdose vitamin C. We'll tell people take 100 milligrams a day or eat one, uh, have one orange. That's not going to give you enough vitamin C. You have to have minimum 2 grams a day according to me. And I think if you have a lot of vitamin C in your diet every day or you take the supplements every day, you are protecting yourself from a lot of coughs and colds and stuff like that. In fact, what Linus found was that even if you expose yourself to somebody with a really bad cough and cold, to the extent that you can put their nasal secretion in your nose, if you are eating a high enough dose of vitamin C every day, you will not fall ill. And he did this experiment in front of other physicians and uh, actually he didn't fall ill because he was on 4 to 5 grams of vitamin C a day. So nowadays, I think we should increase the amount of vitamin C considering that we are in a pandemic, which is a viral uh, viral disease. And I'm not saying that you should not get vaccinated or should not wear a mask. You must always wear a mask in public. Uh, don't be around any sick people. You must uh, practice social distancing for sure. But we must also take vitamin C, which I think makes quite a difference. And the second thing which I feel that our Indian diet is underdosed in is protein. So your immune system also runs on protein. So we need to have enough protein. Uh, we need to have enough essential fats and we need to have enough vitamin C. Fair enough. One other thing that I would like to add is uh, the D3 component. Almost 90% of human population is D3 deficient. Now, most of the D3 that you get from the sunlight is usually between 8.30 and 10. Barring a few percent of people that go out that early and probably that's also got to do with if they are staying uh, probably in Goa or something where, you know, they are roaming around the beach. You're not getting enough uh, D3 to uh, probably for the body to be absorbed uh, well. So one other supplement which even the studies in today's uh, time that has come out if someone uh, bothers to uh, find out is uh, most of the cases with COVID are with people who are D3 deficient. There are huge number of studies. I think uh, Europe did a study on almost uh, I think around 5 million people that were admitted and found that 90% were D3 deficient. So I do take a D3 supplement every week and keep my D3 level at least 60 or above. Yeah. So what uh, our medical fraternity says when you uh, go for your testing, it usually shows between 30 and 90. So even if you are 35, uh, usually the doctors say, okay, you are fine. Uh, no, don't need to supplement right now. But for optimizing D3 to the immuno benefits that the D3 can provide, one should be at least around 60 and above. Absolutely, I agree. The other, probably the other thing uh, along with this, since it's the time of uh, pandemic and uh, the other thing usually even uh, helps with the antioxidant property is zinc. 
again vegetarians are usually zinc deficient vegetarians usually uh, their entire diet is around uh, veg source of protein yeah, which is not, not the going best, to be eating shellfish yeah, which is not exactly. the best source of zinc so yeah. zinc is something that someone should be uh supplementing either way zinc also has a benefit towards indirectly increasing testosterone not directly but indirectly but yes one of the best antioxidants that even uh, probably someone should and again zinc is something that should be taken at night most of the minerals need a gastric emptying so they will be absorbed if there is not much food that is there which is going under digestion so zinc probably even if someone wants to supplement needs to supplement at least an hour or two after your dinner so kaiwan as a strength athlete or as a a guy who runs regularly or just a guy who cycles regularly how much protein should we actually take per day so we were taught in medical school that you should take 1 gram per uh, okay. body lean body weight of mass yeah. do you really think that's enough not enough if someone is uh, undergoing any activity so if you the need for the body or the need for the protein for the body increases when you start putting up activities so if someone is training then someone is probably even doing uh, zumba or anything the caloric so the, the protein need of the body uh, goes up by almost twice the margin again the most important thing with people above uh, 50 years is they should be thinking about increasing protein because as you age the body's need for protein increases rather than decreases so most of the people that we see will start going down on protein thinking that you know i might have this and i might have that but if you were someone that you usually checks your you know blood parameters and you know that everything is fine usually people think that it will increase the uric acid but uric acid again is something uh, which is not directly linked to protein but mostly linked to hydration so if someone is not well hydrated usually in those cases the uric acid goes up so yes the protein need according to me is at least around a uh, gram per pound of body weight even if you don't catch lean mass if you take a little excess of 15 20 percent is not going to harm because protein has various needs so it's not just the need for the muscle to be fed it's also the brain it's also the heart it's also the organs everything feeds on amino acids even your immune system is probably uh, boosted with a lot of amino acids so the need for protein should is very high and should be included in everyone's regime so nowadays it's become a fashion to drink bcas during workouts what do you think about that so my uh thing is are bcas necessary or amino acids necessary if your total protein content is up probably not now do they have a down effect do they have a downside effect or a, a harm obviously not so why do i have amino acids i love taking amino acids intro workout and also that people should know that you should be gulping down amino acids and not sipping because it has to cross the uh, blood uh, plasma level, uh, barrier so unless it's not creating a spike it's not going to be properly absorbed another reason what i find is it gives me some form of energy i would rather not have carbohydrate and have a good protein source a easily digested protein source so that's my uh, logic of including uh, amino acid means if there is no harm and if you can spend that much money probably uh, you should have an no, amino when, acid drink. when i was losing weight and i was on a rather low carbohydrate diet because i never went off carbohydrates altogether because i didn't see the point of that's it. another myth yeah so what i was what i found was that half way through the workout when i would run out of steam and i would drink bcas i would get quite a bit of energy exactly. maybe the bcas are being converted into some amount are being converted into glucose and fueling your workout but definitely for that extra pep during your workout bca makes a huge difference it does it does 100% does